Adam Gaudet. He's at the Northeastern University right now, and just earlier today, against the Bentley Falcons in a 6-1 victory, Adam Gaudet got himself two goals and two assists. Now, this is good enough to put him in first for NCAA scoring. He's actually first by default. He's really tied for first because he's got himself 30 points in 20 games played. The guy who is also tied for first, Henrik Borgstrom, he's at 30 points as well, but the difference is he's got it in 21 games. So Gaudet, with the game in hand, by default puts him above the Florida Panthers prospect playing in Denver. Now, this is awesome. If you guys want to look at what happened, you guys can check out the Northeastern University's YouTube channel because they got themselves highlights. And I'll leave a link in the description to Northeastern's YouTube channel down below. You can watch the game for yourself. Look at Adam Gaudet's goals. He got two goals. Look at Adam Gaudet's assists. He got two of those. And I wanted to take this video to really just start talking about the potential of Adam Gaudet. And where does he fit? What's his ceiling? What is the expected success level for Adam Gaudet? Because you could say a lot of different opinions, and there would be many different people out there who would either agree or disagree, because right now, the general consensus is basically, well, he's an NHL player. Yeah, he's got it in him. He's got that potential, but just how good? And we don't know how good. We don't know if he's going to be an elite first-line talent. He most likely won't be. We don't know if he'll be a bottom six grinder. He most likely won't be. So the general safe zone, I guess, you could just say, okay, he's a middle six guy. He's a top six guy. And that's, 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 that's cool. You can, you can, it's, it's opinion based, right? You can say whatever you want in terms of this, but Generally speaking, just taking a look at who we have as a player right here, Adam Gaudet is, he's improving. Just year after year after year, taking a look at when he was drafted, he was drafted 2015, okay. What did he do in 2015? Well, he was playing for the Cedar Rapids Rough Riders of the USHL, that means he was still playing in high school, that's basically a high school league. In this league, in his draft year, he got himself 30 points in 50 games played, 13 goals, 17 assists. His draft plus one year, 30 points in 41 games for Northeastern. His draft plus two year, 52 points in 37 games for Northeastern, 26 goals, 26 assists. And this year, with the A on his sweater, he got himself 30 points, 20 games played, 15 goals, 15 assists, and it's his draft plus three year. This is his third year in college. Um, he's studying, you know, that, that's how it works. It looks like he will sign a contract. Whether that be a Vancouver Canucks contract or some other team's contract, it looks like he will be under contract by the time August rolls around. So, just taking a look at the player. I mean, the goals that he got in this game today, they were both rebound goals. The first one, it was a breakaway. He got stopped by the pad. He tried to go five-hole, and then he banks in the rebound. Um, the second goal... It's another play where he takes a shot, the goalie kind of swallows it up, and then he gives it away, and then Goddard is right there, and he taps it in. He got two assists as well. Those were both um, good plays by his teammates. I believe the assists were secondary assists. I know for a fact that one of them was. You guys can watch the replay, the highlights of the game. Look out for number eight with the A on his jersey. That is our prospect, Adam Goddard. So, he's first. He's tied for first in the NCAA in terms of scoring, and he's got that game in hand. Now, we need to sign him this season. We need to sign him this offseason because if we don't sign him this offseason, then his rights get lost from us and any other team in the NHL has the capability of signing him. And unless he plans on staying in college for hockey and maybe getting a job elsewhere, he's going to sign a contract. So by this time, in around eight months, he will be under contract for an NHL team if he wants to play in the NHL, which... I'm pretty sure that's what he wants to do in life. But the ultimate question is, where does he fit? Because he's a centerman. He's a centerman, he's right-handed, and what's he gonna do? What, what's his role gonna be for Vancouver? If you take a look at our center depth, we got ourselves guys who can play center, but 
also play wing as well. We got Jonathan Dolan, we got Elias Pettersson. These guys are both players who can play center, but who can also play wing. And some of these guys haven't necessarily been sticking to one position the entirety of their minor hockey careers. So just like looking at Elias Pettersson, like he was playing the majority of this season in Vox Show on the right wing. Dolan is now listed as a left winger now too. So what is it there? Adam Gaudet, if he is a center, if he steps behind guys like Pedersen and Bo Horvat, do we see Adam Gaudet as a capable third-line center? I think he'd be capable, but do you think he's going to be staying there? Do you think that's where he would spend his career as a third-line center behind Bo Horvat and Pedersen? I don't know. And that's the thing nobody knows, and of course... Of course you could say, oh, he could always get better, he could always get worse, maybe he comes in as a fourth-line role and he stays there, but whatever his skill turns out to be, you always have to take into consideration that we have centers in the team that will stay here. We got Pedersen and we got Bo, so does that mean that we will be fine with leaving Godet in a third-center role? Because taking a look at his potential, just based off of the numbers, purely just the numbers, take away the work ethic, the leadership, and all that, just look at the numbers. He looks like he will be a top six guy in the NHL, a top six, middle six kind of player. He's not going to be a first liner, he's not going to be a fourth liner, but he'll be in that range. So, will we really feel comfortable keeping a guy who probably should, maybe, would be capable of playing on the second line? Would it be fair to keep him on the third line for the entirety of his career? Or do we switch him on the right wing to play alongside guys like Horvat, that right-handed shot in the right wing, or do we make him a left winger? And we have that right shot on the left side, so that offside one-timer. It really, it, it all boils down to however many players we got in the organization alongside of Adam Gaudet by the time he's able to make the NHL. And obviously, this is all just assuming that he signs a contract with us. Maybe he doesn't. I'm fairly certain, however, that he will sign with us. I think there's no insecurities there. I think he wants to be a Canuck very badly. He likes Besser. He likes having the Vancouver Canucks in his bios and Twitter and Instagram, and he's got it plastered everywhere. He's got the pictures of him in the Canuck sweater, and just reading off of this kid's social media, I can tell, you know, he, will, he likes being a Canuck. So, it all really depends. Because I can tell you guys, when I made Adam Gaudet in my video game, I made him a top 6 yellow. I think this is t kind of the point of the video where it doesn't really make sense anymore. It's not really formal discussion about our prospects. It's just telling a story. So, yeah, I, I made Adam Gaudet in the video game, and I kept him on the second line. He grew to like an 86, 87 overall kind of player, which, I mean, if we get an 87 overall player out of Adam Gaudet, that would be an absolute steal from Jim Benning, wouldn't you say so yourself? But taking a look at my spreadsheet for uh, general manager mode in NHL 18, Adam Gaudet retired from the Vancouver Canucks organization with 380 goals, 532 assists, and 912 points. He spent his entirety of his career in Vancouver because I refused to trade him. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of you guys out there who play the video games have also kind of put Gaudet in the game as well. You know, looked up his stats on Elite Prospects or whatever entered those in and have him as like a franchise high kind of player. No, just kidding. I know you guys all want to be realistic, but I think the general belief is that, well, he's going to be a top six guy. Having him as a top six yellow or a top six high might be a little bit undervalued, to be honest. I think that might be a little bit too low for a guy like Gaudet, just based off of the points that he's able to get and the potentials, and just what is expected out of a player who is producing at 30 points in 20 games. I mean, I don't know, for sure, it, it, it it's all up for debate. And it's all up for debate. I mean, I said it earlier, that was the point of the video where I just stopped talking about real-life stuff and just started talking about the video game. But Adam Gaudet, we really don't know what his potential is at this point. You could guess middle six, top six, and that's probably most likely. But the fact is, this kid's young, and that's that's just... That's the likelihood of all of our prospects. They're all young kids, so they've all got a chance to prove us wrong, whether that be in good ways or bad ways. We don't know if he's going to be an elite player. We don't know if he's going to be a bottom six fringe NHL player. I sure hope he becomes a good NHLer because he's on pace to looking like he will be. Like, we got this guy in the fifth round, and now he's first in NCAA scoring at, like, what, 21, 22 years of age? 
That's awesome. That is absolutely awesome. I love that. I love seeing our prospect doing well. So, yeah, check out the Northeastern University's uh, YouTube channel. Check out their highlights because they've got highlights. I'm actually going to subscribe to them right now because I want to see more highlights of this team. I did the same thing with the Fighting Sioux, by the way. I subscribed to University of North Dakota because I love the CBS line. Besser, Schmaltz, and Gajula. They tore up the league. I loved it. I love watching the, um, the college hockey. It's fun. And now we're watching it again because we got two guys in the systems over there. Hope you guys enjoyed this video for Plus Things, Nitro Troll, Second Nitro Troll, and Gaming. Sorry if this was not really a good video. I think this was just me talking about prospects. It's like midnight right now and I just had some pizza. So, you know, it's just some late night thoughts, I guess. Late night thoughts. I already said the outro. I'm just going to leave things off here with a bye.